heat up your frozen dinners, grab your TV tray, and settle in for another episode of the Plus Platoon, your podcast for all things Disney Plus, brought to you by Disney Plus fans. Watch along with us every week as we cover all the new, the old, the good, and the bad on Disney Plus. So put down that remote, don't touch that dial, and welcome your fabulous Plus Platoon host. Hey everyone, welcome to the Plus Platoon. We're a Disney Plus fan podcast that gives honest, spoiler-filled reviews of movies and shows on Disney Plus. We'll look at new releases, coming attractions, and we'll even go back into the vault to revisit some of the classic Disney that's on the platform. Make sure you're subscribed and you will never miss a moment. I'm going to bring in Kate. Kate, good to see you this evening. Good to see you too. Next, we've got Pete. Pete, welcome in. You know, I tried to find my coonskin cap, and it turns out I don't have one. Mm. I was wondering if any one of the tuners would have a coonskin hat. Um, no, but I do know my mother had one. Uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, like, and we'll get into that, but uh, last and certainly not least, let's not forget to bring in Steve. Steve, glad to see you this evening. Hey, everyone. I'll ask my dad if he had one. This would be totally my dad's era. Yeah, guys. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share. We got some really fun shows coming up, even next week. When I thinking we're probably all in this together. So, um, that being said, this year, this week, we went back to probably what I would call the first TV cult sensation. Of uh, we went back and we are talking about Davy Crockett, um, 1955 Disneyland TV shows. Um, there were six of them in all. Uh, we looked at the three that were included in Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier. It included the one with the, the, the Creek Wars, him going to Congress, and him at the Alamo. So not exactly a happy ending on this one. Um, <laughs> then now with the other three, they turned that into uh, Davy Crockett and the River Pirates. But it came out. After this, this was actually, they packaged these three together and made it a theatrical release after it had been on the Disneyland TV show because this was truly a cultural phenomenon. Those were the words I was looking for earlier, by the way, it was a cultural phenomenon of coonskin hats were everywhere. My mother, who would not have been that old at the time, had a coonskin hat. She has and actually still has a Davy Crockett charm bracelet. It was everywhere. There were multiple versions of this in the top 10 on the radio and music. This is back been when music sales, like the sheet music sales were huge. So it was a cultural phenomenon. Um, everyone knew who Davy Crockett was and Fess Parker, who Fess Parker was for playing Davy Crockett. Um, he did do, uh, Fess Parker did actually do one other um, Disney movie. Also, not one with exactly a happy ending. He was the dad in Old Yeller, um, oh, yeah. who comes back. So I'm going to start with Pete on this one. What about this movie remains a classic? What still worked from this show? Um. So the, the one thing I wanted to mention, you know, you're talking about how 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 big this was, right? It was on TV at a time when TV was like the biggest, newest thing. They then released it into theaters and it made $2 million in mm -hmm. 1955 in theaters after it had been on TV already. After it had been on TV for free and had right. been repeated on TV for free. Right. Yeah. So that's how popular this was that, you know, it wasn't the biggest box office hit of 1955, but the fact that it had come from TV to movies um and then the other impressive thing about it is it was shot for tv which at the time was in black and white but walt disney had the foresight to say hey someday someone might want to see this in color i'm going to shoot it in color and he did this with some other things not everything but he like zorro wasn't about everything going forward except for zorro right zorro was not but a lot of other things were and so it was you know from i guess what I'm getting to is from a historical perspective, to me, this is an interesting watch. 
Um, the other thing I wanted to say was I think I get why Fess Parker was so popular because he was very charming and very handsome as Davy Crockett. And so I can understand why why he was so popular in the role. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the rest of you guys. So Steve, you got anything else? Um, I think like you, like the historical, like knowing that was such a huge hit and trying to see why. Um, teaching nine or ten year olds, I totally see why this would be a huge hit. I mean, because the nine and ten year olds, they love the play fighting all the time. So this would have been right up their alley. Um, I think as, as a kid of how I played, I mean, I never saw this as a kid, but the same thing. It's the good, bad fighting. Totally would have loved it. Um, I love the, the, there was some funny parts, like the, I'm grinning a bear or something mm -hmm. later than he tries to do it with um red stick. It made me sort of chuckle, like, well, it worked with a bear. <laughs> like, Even though it didn't. Work? Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is a it's a classic playing. I still remember, was it culturally appropriate? No, but we played cowboys and Indians all the time growing up. I uh, growing up here in the Midwest because we. I mean, that was back in the eighties, but westerns were still on TV a lot, especially the John the old John Wayne movies and the reruns. And I really, really enjoyed the first half of this. First half to two thirds of this, I really enjoyed. I liked the. The pure, the good guy versus bad guy instance. Now, was some of it culturally insensitive? Yes, but they had, for the most part, they had Native Americans playing Native Americans. So that's a huge win. I mean, huge. Think West Side Story, <laughs> where, you know, yeah. Rita Moreno was no, only Puerto Rican. Yeah. So, right. no, I, I, th um, I think from that aspect, like, as you say, it wasn't as bad as as it, it was better than a lot of the standards of the time that i guess is the best way i can put it that doesn't that doesn't make it okay <laughs> but again no. you're looking back at something from 70 years ago it's not going to have the same standards as we do but the fact that they did portray david davy crockett as like supporting native american rights and things like that um and him arguing that, that, yes, that yes i killed some but i've changed my i've changed my point of view Right. And we were at we were at war with the and that really was a war that happened. There really was a war at that point in the in the Kentucky, Tennessee area with the settlers and the natives. Right. And it was solved not by we won and you lost. It was we signed a peace treaty. So that part of it and the whole Andrew Jackson, him coming out against the Andrew Jackson Indian bill. That bill ultimately ends up passing and ends up being right. horrible for the natives. Yes. <laughs> but I love the fact that they include that. And like, it's actually like there's some there's some historical accuracy here. They didn't yeah. make them win at the Alamo. Yeah. I mean, that would have so, been a tough, man. tough pull. That would have been a tough pull. But no. in today's movies, they might have tried it. <laughs> so. Kate, anything else, anything that the guys haven't talked about that worked for you? <laughs> um, I really liked uh, the when he goes to the Senate. Um, you know, I was the opposite of you, Derek. I enjoyed more of the second half. Um, not the horribly sad ending that they didn't really show and kind of just fluffed him over. But um, I, yeah, I enjoyed the parts when... Uh, I also really enjoyed the part when his neighbor, something Charlie, uh, um, Charlie two shirts, was it? Yeah. Charlie two shirts. And the people came and took his land and he was like, it's our neighbor. And then he helped him. Like, I liked that part. Uh, and, and, the song and, and the bad guy. Okay. Classic comedy. Where else have you seen the, the main bad guy of the middle? I have no what? idea. Okay. Bigfoot. No. Was it his name? Uh, yeah, Big Bigfoot was his, Bigfoot name, was his yes. name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Has everyone here seen Some Like It Hot? Oh, I love that yes. movie. One of the yeah. he's one of Spat. He's Spat's main. Oh. Yes. Yeah, he's Spat's main heavy. Columbo yeah. in that. So did he's everybody? Also on Dick Tracy. 
yeah. later, like the Madonna, Dick Tracy. I did had to look them up. Did everybody recognize the gambler at the in the last section? Being oh, yeah. Captain I Hook? recognized him, but I didn't know what I knew him from. He's Captain Hook. Oh, that's why he looked familiar. Okay. Yeah, he, I mean, he does the voice of the, the does, voice of Captain. Oh, Hook. you don't mean okay. Sorry, I thought you meant from the no. movie Hook. No. Oh no no that's that's, 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 that's don't worry about it don't worry about it don't worry about it mind your business uh, yeah, and I liked the yeah, music I liked that uh, well I like that they took it to a minor key when some more th sad things were happening except for the Davy Davy Crockett part that was always in major but I like that they took it to a minor key in certain times that's yeah, it typical musical cues okay yeah did, okay did you enjoy all the female representative in the representatives in the movie. Representation. <laughs> and and that we will shift to what about this should have actually been at the Alamo with it and just kind of died with the rest of them. And Kate, I'm going to give you number one on this one because, yeah. So I, I vividly person. remember watching this and Zorro and the, the original Mickey Mouse Club um, because they would have all of these like back to back late at late night. So I remember watching this and I remember liking it a lot. Um, I also remember thinking like, wait, is Davy Crockett a real person? Like, and, and wanting to do research, but excuse me, this is before the time of the internet. So um, I did not enjoy this show. I, the culture, cultural appropriation was not, this show did not age well. Age well. Um, at all. Uh, I just found it so boring. And I, to be fair, I like Buddy Ebsen a lot, who plays um, what's his name? The best friend. Uh, oh. Uh, um. um. Oh my gosh, I had it's right here. G. Uh, Georgie. Yes, I think you're right. Georgie something. I like him. I liked him in the Beverly Hillbillies. Um, I think he's a good comedic actor. Possible. Yeah. Um, I just, I mean, this movie just drug. Um, I, I, I understand why they put it all together into a movie. I probably could have stomached it. I probably liked it better when it was shorter segments. Um, I, it, it has a terribly sad ending with the Alamo and what happened at the Alamo was terribly sad, but, um, just the only parts that I really enjoyed was when he went to the Senate and he like, and his sidekick wrote the book about him and he's like, I've never been west of the Mississippi. And he's like, well, you have in this book. And then he had to wear his Davy Crockett clothes. Cause that's what people were expecting. And like having him do stump speeches when I loved the stump speech where he was like, I, I know nothing about politics, uh, but I know what it's like to live in the woods. And I know what it's like to take care of our people. Um, like that <laughs> felt really nice to have a politician saying something like, Oh, like you, anyway, we won't go there, but I just, I just couldn't get into it. I couldn't get into it when he fought the pair. I couldn't get into it when he was dealing with the Native Americans and watching, like, put down your guns and do what the white man says. It's just, like, I know, I know that's what happened and it's awful. And I just, and then the Alamo was just heartbreaking when he looked at his friend and he said, why did you come back? Like, what are you doing? Why are you here? And he goes, well, I guess I got lonely. And it's just, I just, I don't like sad things right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it, this just wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea. I can totally, but then I told my husband, I had to watch Davy Crockett and he was like, King of the Wild Frontier. And he like, he was like, which episodes did you watch? Da, da, da. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So it just wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me, but that's okay. Pete, what about you? Yeah, I, um. I actually think I because I remember watching a few years ago watching this and the River Pirates one. I think I actually liked the River Pirates one a little better. Um, I I ignoring the culture issues. Um, I was with Derek. I liked kind of like the first half of the movie when they got when he got to Congress 
and even like going to the Alamo, it was pretty boring to me. Um, and then the ending at the Alamo was kind of exciting, but also, you know, how it's going to end. Um, cause I do remember the Alamo. <laughs> I should have done that joke at the beginning. Ah, oh. mm-hmm. um, <laughs> sorry. So I like I think- it. <laughs> so I, I, you know, it, it, it wasn't, it, it kind of dragged. It was very, you could tell it was three things sewn together. Right. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It was, it was, it was okay. Um, I think there was, I think there was, uh, there were good parts. There were boring parts is what I would say. So Steve, what about you? Um, my biggest thing I felt that was disjointed. Like you said, um, my other half was even watching like, what happened? What, why did it jump? Because he wasn't sort of paying attention. Um, I like I found it boring. I had a hard time staying focused. I maybe it's just not my cup of tea. But I know I've watched like Guns Gunsmoke and Bonanza, so like the westerns. I enjoy those. I was bored, and I guess I look back at Zorro and fell in love with Zorro. And here, even by the, the end, like I have no feeling for the character. Oh, you died. That's sad, but like no emotion there. I expect, I expected more, like to pull my heartstrings or something there, and I felt like nothing. My kids are gonna go live with my sister-in-law. Uh, right. My two or blonde like, boys. Like you know, when the like, the off. wife died. If I picked up that correctly, like yeah. oh, that's yeah. sad. But again, no, like no emotion. <laughs> well, he's like, I gotta go off on my own for a couple years, which isn't true. He actually remarried in the same year his wife died. So yeah. Well, but but that was done back then. Yeah. But let's yeah. Say, he wasn't True. exactly home a lot. Yeah. So, um, yeah, for me, I understood why they put the stuff about Congress in there. It was it got a little long. Um, the scene at the Alamo got long. I en- I enjoyed the fact that um, they never really mentioned the fact that there were women and children at the Alamo and, and at the Alamo also. Um, about 15 people did survive the Alamo and it was mostly, it was all, none of the combatants survived, but some of the women and children did survive. Um, yeah, I, I mean, is the cultural appropriation not what it should be? Absolutely. I think we can all agree on that, but as a show, I'll be perfectly honest. It was more I liked than I didn't. So, um, Pete. Yeah, so you're probably the one that's watched uh, the River Pirates most recently. Mm-hmm. Does his wife show up at all in that, or is this truly the only scene we ever see her in? I don't remember if she does. Okay. okay. Um. Obviously, the River Pirate. I believe the River Pirates takes place between the first thing of this and then and, the Congress yes. one. Yes, it's it's, so. it's one, five, and six. River Pirates is two, three, and four. Right, and the, the River Pirates makes more sense as a complete story, I think, too. But I don't know if I don't think his wife is in it. Um, as I said, there, it 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 isn't ex, it isn't exactly uh, uh, telling a lot of stories about women in this in this whole thing. So, yeah, you know. and just doing a quick look, no, she doesn't show up. Yeah. So yeah, this is one of the few ones where he is not exactly the hero is not exactly portrayed as a family man. No. So, yeah. And he was. And actually, that and was I, I, I like looked up what was real about it. And one of the and the dumping the kids on the sister in law was real. <laughs> he, he, he did do that. So, yeah. OK. So as we talked, Davy Crockett has one of the iconic theme songs of all time, I would argue, mm-hmm. um, especially for people of a certain age and older like us. Um. But I want you guys to think, in your opinion, what is the best TV theme song? What's your or your favorite TV theme song? And I'm going to start with the millennial over here. And I think we're only going to need one guess. But Kate, with you. <laughs> it's friends. So no one so, told you. So, so, but here's the thing. So in my opinion, friends is the most iconic. Like. If that song will play and someone will clap. Like it's just yeah. 
Um, but there is actually a theme song that is going to be a very, very deep cut. And most people probably listening to this are going to be like, Kate, I think that that show didn't exist. I think you had a fever dream. Um, but, but this we it up and it does exist. It does exist. We looked it up. It was a show called The Torkelsons. And it was on from 91 to 93 um, on NBC, right, Derek? Yes. But it aired, I remember it seeing it Disney. on. Hmm? It was made by Disney. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing it on the di- reruns on the Disney Channel. And the theme song was just this heartwarming, like, it, the words were literally... People say God looks out for the work in man. I sure hope he's looking out for me. These empty pockets need a help in hand, but our kitchen table's full of family. Like, I just remember hearing this theme song as a kid and, like, crying because I loved it so much. So, unpopular opinion, uh, deep, deep cut, but the Torkelsons was one of my favorites. But Friends or Big Bang Theory is another one that's good. But anyway, I could talk about theme songs for forever. Go ahead, Pete. (laughs) Yeah, this is a really tough question because I could I could think of a, a dozen easily that like, you know, we, we always talk about it. And my wife and I, it's like, I can't I can't remember what I where I put my glasses, but I can still remember the theme song, all the lyrics to Gilligan's Island, you know, uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me but that, too. that's not my pick. That's not my pick. Um, I'm I'm going to go with um Sometimes you gotta go where everybody Daddy, knows so your name. Boom, 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 boom. That would be his. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, um, my two favorite shows from the 80s, and one was kind of from the 70s, but it was the 80s. I watched it were MASH and Cheers. And MASH is actually a theme song from a movie before it yeah. was a television show. So that doesn't count. So we'll go with Cheers. Um, I can't think of my favorite, but the ones I because rem- for me would be like Laverne and Shirley, um, Facts of Life, or it didn't actually have any words, but um, Chips, like just the music from Chips. Mew, I remember watching mew, that. Mew, mew, mew. Yeah, mew, mew, or um, mew, mew, mew. Dukes of Hazard because watching that all the time. Ah. So I guess those are just those those memories. Or the Love the Boat theme songs. Remember the babysitter would watch that on Friday uh, nights. And we always had the exciting babysitter. Exciting so. and <laughs> yeah. new. Oh, I thought yes. about two more. Go no. ahead, Kate. Go ahead, Derek. No, 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 no. I'm going to let you go first. No, I'm going to let right. you go first. <laughs> um, see, for me, um, growing up in the 80s, um, Pete, love your choice. I mean, there's anyone my age, really, and older, knows that song and can recognize that song. Um, I'm going to go, like, I loved, like, the Night Court theme. Oh, yeah. Like that bass. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's, it's, they, they kind of rip off for the Seinfeld theme. Yeah, a little so, bit. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I th- I'm going to agree with you as far as the best theme song. I'm going to go with Pete on this one of the Cheers theme song, but how many of us, Kate, especially, uh, how many of us could repeat the Saved by the Bell theme song? Or, come on. Yeah, Pete, probably that. not. Okay. How about the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme? I was just writing oh, Fresh Prince. Yeah. Yes. yeah, that's a that's I throw in the, one. Then I throw in there Adam's family in then. West yes. Philadelphia, uh, born and raised. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, Adam's family is a great one. And Steve, yeah. when you said Laverne and Shirley, I thought happy days. Happy days. Yeah. I wrote that one too. Yeah. Thursday, happy days. So um, I wrote down the Wonder Years. Um, it was a jazz version of I Get By with a Little Help from My Friends. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What yeah. uh, would you do if I does, say that? Count if it's a knockoff, team? though. Yeah, I, I, I can't count that because it's not written oh, okay. for the show. Um, <laughs> Do you all remember the show Welcome Back, Cotter? Yes. Welcome back. I always loved Welcome Back, Cotter. Yeah. Um, I, I was also obsessed one. with John Travolta as a child, so that's fine. Um, mm-hmm. And then this one is a newer show, but I love this song. It's the orchestration, um, the theme song to Game of Thrones. It's the orchestration in it is so like the dum bum ba na na bum ba da bum bum bo do dum bum bo do do like it's just 
It's so good. Yeah, that's that's probably see, more for your is, younger This is a generation. testament to most of the songs that or the shows that we talked about were like pre nineteen ninety. Because the most of the shows after nineteen ninety did not put words and thoughts into a true. They didn't have the true theme song at the beginning. Right. Yeah. Even fr by the time Friends did it, it was almost gone. That, and that's why Big Friends is kind of the last one. And then Big Bang came back with it. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, Big, Big Bang had one, right? But, I mean, okay, and then, of course, you've got to go one of the originals, the I Love Lucy theme. Oh, yeah. Or I, can get... I Dream of Jeannie. Ba -dum, da -dum, da -dum, or even Dick Van Dyke. Bum, 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 Dick Van Dyke show. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Ba -da -bum -ba -da -bum -ba -da -dum -ba -da. Okay, what was that? Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny um, Carson. Yeah, it was a Johnny Carson theme show song. So, yeah. so many great ones. And as you said, none of them are recent. Right. So, yeah. come on, come on, songwriters. Oh, wait, you have to, you know, produce good stuff for people to And I think that's part of it. The stuff has to be good that people watch every week so they actually then remember the theme song. I think the Office theme song is pretty iconic, but it doesn't have words to it. Yeah. Like, when you hear the theme song to The Office, you know it's The Office theme song. But I, I would agree okay. that it's not it's it's not iconic because it doesn't have words. Or what about The Simpsons? Yeah, The Simpsons, but that's but they, actually oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. from the 80s. It started in the yeah. early 90s. Yeah. Right, I, I know. Yeah, 90s, I know. Yeah. So. But it doesn't have words except yeah. The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Um, well, there's also Law and Order. Well, true. And then you mentioned the mash. Do you guys know the actual name to that song? Of course oh, I do. Yes. yes. What is it, Kate? I know Pete knows it. What is it, Kate? The actual name of the song is Suicide, suicide is, is Painless. Yeah, suicide, suicide is Painless. Is I knew that. It brings on that. many changes, but yeah. I can take or leave it if I please. And you'll notice they never actually sing the words when it was on TV. It, no, it was in, in, the, it was movie, in the movie. It had the words. Yeah. So, okay. As we always do, we rate shows like this and shows that are made into movies, etc. Cups of Pixie Dust out of five. Kate, I'm starting with you. Johnny, uh, not Johnny Carson. Davy Crockett, <laughs> King of the Wild Frontier. Okay, so I'm going to give this a two. And the only reason it isn't lower than that is because I did enjoy this show as a kid when it was episodic. I, I feel like I am being extremely generous with my vote here. It should be a one, but I'm going to give it a two. Because the the main actor did well, the the actors did well. I'm gonna give it a solid two. And as you said, you liked it more episodic, and that's how it was originally produced. I did. Podcast. Yeah, I so. did. Okay. Um, I think I was wavering between a two and a half and a three. I think I'm actually gonna go three because I think I think this is worth seeing. I think you know, again, you got to realize it's of its time, but I think for things of its time with uh you know native american representation it isn't the worst there's a no, lot worse no, stuff no 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 um and as i said there's parts of it i did enjoy so I, i'm gonna say three i'm a two it was just so boring and i took into account that it was three different episodes and i looked at that it was a two okay um and i'm gonna go two and a half because because parts of it for me were definitely a three but if I'm going the whole thing, it, it 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 can't quite hit a three for me. So, but two and a half, I would say watch it. Everyone watch it at least once, or at least watch the first half of it. Um, yeah. So well, three is probably a little generous, but I'm going to stick with it. Okay, fair enough. So, Kate, what have we got for Disney Plus news this week? Uh, apparently, nothing because we can't hear her. Sorry. <laughs> we have three items on the Disney Plus news and only one of them I'm excited about. Um, <laughs> we have to guess I'll which let one? you all choose which one I'm excited about. Okay. Number one, Disney Plus is going to be home to a young adult version of Phantom of the Opera. 
this is and not going to be one of there, those and there is things no, that you're going to like. Yeah, they do not know if that's simply going to be young adults playing the same characters or if it's going to have the music or there's no information there. But please know. Number two, Marvel is releasing a second season of I Am Groot directly to YouTube. And I have a feeling it will eventually be on Disney Plus, but Marvel's been doing a lot of stuff straight to YouTube lately um, for their 85th anniversary. Um, I know at least at least the first episode is out of I Am Groot. There may be a couple out by now. So I have not watched any of the new ones, but... Mm. And third, Disney is yet again announcing that it will raise prices by $3 for its no ads version of the service. The version with ads will be $8 a month, while the ad-free version will be $11 per month. These changes go into effect December 8th. And, and then, right now, the ad-free version is $8 a month. And that's that's no Hulu, no ESPN. Correct. Gotcha. Um, I do know the current price anyway. If like you're starting Verizon now is $10 a month, for the ad-free Disney, the Hulu, and the ESPN. So oh, wow. you now, you know, if you have a grandfathered in contract, still getting it for some people still getting it for free. Me. Me. But yeah, I mean and I'm waiting, I saw, I'm waiting for them to pull that, but <laughs> they haven't yet. Yeah, they haven't yet. And um I saw an article apparently, and I didn't get this on Disney Plus News, but apparently the um, actual like income outcome per customer statement was hacked and released for Disney Plus, and it's not good. They only wait, made, wait, say that again. What is it? They, 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 uh, people hacked Disney and showed how much they're actually making per customer, and income, gross income averaged five and a half dollars per customer per subscriber. So a month. A month, which means Verizon has to be paying them like nothing, because if everyone else is paying eight or nine, eight dollars a month, and they're only averaging five, so it's it's just honest answer. The way they're going, I'm not sure how much longer Disney Plus will be around. At some oh, point, there's no way they'll get rid of it. I don't. I don't think so. I think you're just going to see more of. I think I think the future is still bundling, and you're, it's basically going to turn into its cable. You know, yeah. As long, it, as, every, long as, as long as they keep the on-demand stuff, because because we've been we've been watching some stuff on Amazon, and it's actually through Freebie. And I'm sitting there sitting through like two minutes of commercials every five minutes. I'm like, I'm back to I'm back to watching cable here. This yeah. is like I'm watching cable. You know, I mean, it was Freebie, which is a free service, but. Yeah, I, I think that's and, the uh, and same thing with Hulu is that's why I don't like watching stuff on Hulu because now in a great big long movie, it's not like they try and stretch a two hour movie to three hours like most cable networks will do. Yeah, but like they'll, they'll only put they'll put like eight minutes of commercials in it. So yeah. that's not terrible. That's only going to get worse. It is only going to get worse. So as teased at the beginning of the show, and I know one of us is really excited for the next week's show and the rest of us are. Yeah. We are going to uh, see that we're, if we're all Wildcats or not with High School Musical. Now, this is the original movie. This is not the series. This is not a stage production. This is not two, three, or 14, whatever they're up to by now. There was only three. There were only three? Well, yep. okay, sure. <laughs> um, so, but this is the original High School Musical um, and we are going to have a special guest on next week. So a, a high school musical semi super fan, if you will. So, um, guys, we do have some fun shows coming up, but we've got a couple openings too, especially mid to end of October. So if you have suggestions, please email us at plus at gmail.com, Facebook us, message, Twitter, Insta, whatever, get a hold of us somehow. Uh, we have no shows every Thursday on YouTube and all the major podcasting services for Kate, Pete, and Steve. We will see everyone next week. Bye, guys. Thanks 
for watching this week's episode of the Plus Platoon. Be sure to subscribe to the Plus Platoon podcast to keep getting great content each week. Then head over to Apple Podcast and leave those five-star reviews as they help make the Plus Platoon visible to even more Disney Plus fans. Also, go to YouTube and like and subscribe to the Plus Platoon channel where you can watch all future episodes live. If you have a question for the Plus Platoon, please send us an email to plusplatoon at gmail.com or connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Plus Platoon. The Plus Platoon is a Disney Plus fan podcast and is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or the Disney Plus streaming service. All opinions expressed on the show are solely those of the individual hosts and in no way reflect the views of the Walt Disney Company. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned for next week's episode because the Plus Platoon is to be continued. Continued.